Welcome to the webcast for SpaceX's first bandwagon mission, a new line of rideshare missions that will deliver spacecraft to mid-inclination orbits. The Falcon 9 that you see on your screen is currently scheduled to lift off just about 11 minutes from now from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Now, hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Shiva. I'm a space operations engineer here at SpaceX, and I'll be your host as we follow this Falcon 9 for its 14th flight to deliver 11 spacecraft to orbit for six different customers. To date, SpaceX has launched nearly a thousand small sats for customers, uh, excuse me, for 130 different customers across our entire rideshare program. And as the demand for rideshare missions continues to rise, our rideshare program was expanded to accommodate even more small satellites looking for rides to orbit. Now, while our transporter rideshare missions launch into what's called a sun synchronous orbit, the launching into mid inclination orbits fills gaps for our customers that wish to expand their coverage or complete unique objectives. Mid inclinations offer higher revisit rates, meaning the time between flyovers of the same point is faster than what we see with other orbits. So, with that, Falcon 9 is in full autonomous control of today's launch. Let's listen in for the launch director. Go for launch. And that call out indicating that uh, the ground team is ready for today's launch attempt. Weather, uh, payloads, and the range all looking great. Let's uh, watch Thirty seconds. as Falcon 9 lifts off to space today. Plus 30 seconds into flight, successful liftoff of Falcon 9 on the Bandwagon 1 mission, carrying 11 uh, customer satellites into orbit today. Nominal power and telemetry. We are lifting off from uh, Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. Currently throttling down those Merlin 1D engines in preparation for maximum equilibrium shot pressure.
Chris, uh, tracking you from the ground, looking back at this first stage. Again, it's 14th flight today, so we're looking for its 14th landing attempt at landing zone number one. And this is a view from the cameras on board the first stage. We're uh, looking at a shot down towards the engines. You can see the grid fins here. Those will deploy uh, shortly after the uh, boost back burn completes. And a reminder, uh, the second stage is continuing on its mission, but uh, at the request of our customer, we won't be showing any second stage views today. So we're just going to keep uh, focused on the great views we have of the first stage. So what you're seeing here periodically are uh, some white gas coming out of the first stage. On the right-hand box on your screen are the grid fins deploying. We use the aerodynamic grid fins to get the first stage uh, back towards our landing site. They so have aerodynamic control of the vehicle engine. once we get into the Earth's atmosphere. Those uh, white plumes that you're seeing are of an attitude control gas. We use, uh, those are referred to as cold gas thrusters. So um, we, we have some gas stored on the vehicle. And since there isn't very much atmospheric force uh, this high up in the atmosphere, we have to give ourselves little puffs of thrust to orient the vehicle, get the heat shield pointed down, and get the vehicle in the entry attitude to come back towards landing zone one. Great shots of planet Earth. Again, the camera on the right-hand side of your screen uh, now is actually looking up through the inner stage. So uh, we're looking into that uh, carbon fiber inner stage. That's where the second stage was previously. And on the left-hand side of your screen, we've got a ground tracking shot of the first stage making its way back towards landing zone one, not too far from the launch site at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Now we're coming up on the entry burn uh, for the the uh, first stage. So there are two burns that we do here. There's an entry burn where we turn on just a few of Falcon 9's engines. That's to slow down as we start getting back towards the atmosphere and start to pick up some heating on the vehicle. And then the second of those burns is much closer to landing. One entry burn startup. So here's the first of those burns, the entry burn. This burn lasting just about 20 or so seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. Stage one FTSO saved. And there is successful shutdown of the entry burn. So now the next major burn will be the landing burn. That'll happen uh, just before landing will ignite. Just a single Merlin engine. The landing legs will deploy, and then hopefully we'll have a soft touchdown at landing zone one. You can see it starting to come into focus here on the view on the right-hand side of your screen, heading towards landing zone one. Stage one transonic. Stage one landing burn. Stage two FTSO saved. 
And there's the startup of the single center Merlin engine for landing burn. We'll see the grid, uh, excuse me, the landing lights deploy here. H1, landing lake deploy. And there is successful landing Come of our first down. stage. H1 that uh, marks for the 14th landing on this particular booster, 294th landing of an orbital class rocket. Uh, we also heard a call out there for nominal orbit insertion cutoff and then nominal orbit insertion. So that means the second stage is well on its way for uh, the rest of our mission. But with our first stage landed, that's going to bring our webcast coverage to a close for today. If you're interested in learning more about today's payloads and the deployments, please head to our customers' websites to find out more information.